Hi, this is the new organelle, or organelle M. The best way to define it, I guess, is an electronic music chameleon. It can be a drum machine, an effects box, a sampler, or a synth, or any combination of them. At its heart is a computer designed to run open source or free musical patches. The brilliance of the open source model is that once someone makes a component and releases it to the world, anyone else can take that and build upon it into their patch. The result is that now that Organelle has been out for a few years, there are dozens of interesting, creative and fun patches to play with, and also a system called ORAC that lets you easily combine patches into a mega patch without writing a single line of code. Let's take a look at the hardware and also compare the Organelle M to the previous version of the Organelle. The most obvious difference between the two is that the Organelle M has a built-in speaker. This one is actually quite good, but obviously if you're in a noisy environment or want to hear bass tones, you're going to want headphones or speakers connected to this. The Organelle M also has a built-in microphone, which the previous version does not, and that actually is quite useful for sampling and applying real-time audio effects to audio that you just want to sample and you don't have a microphone around. It makes it much more immediate than having to look for a microphone and hook up to the previous Organelle. Aside from the external differences, the Organelle M has a much more powerful processor and more RAM storage, so it can handle tougher tasks, including ORAC, which we'll get to later on. But that said, currently, all the Organelle patches should run smoothly on both machines, though you might see differences as we get to ORAC or on future patches that might need more resources. The new Organelle is a little bit taller. The paint finish on this is slightly more metallic, I guess. The keys here are more clicky than the ones here. These are still, you know, clicky, but it seems like they are a little bit more that way here. The new Organelle also has an on-off switch, which makes it easier to shut off. You had to do that in a menu in the previous one. Let's take a look at what's going on on the back. Both have labels printed upside down, which is brilliant, I think, because you see what you need to see as you lean over. Both have an eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter stereo headphone jack. HDMI out to connect to a monitor if you want to program patches and a micro SD card slot. Both have pedal inputs, stereo left and right input jacks quarter inch and stereo outputs, though here you get two mono outputs and you've got one TRS output on the new organelle. The new organelle has these little dip switches to turn the microphone on or off and the speaker on or off, as well as two 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch MIDI jacks, both out and in. If you want to connect it to regular MIDI cables, you'll need this adapter, which is sold separately and is the TRS-A standard in case you want to buy one. If you want to connect the original organelle to MIDI devices, you'll need a USB MIDI interface. I'll link to a good one in the description. Both have two USB host jacks, which you'll want to use to connect to mouse, keyboard, MIDI controller, or a Wi-Fi adapter. And the new Organelle comes with a Wi-Fi adapter in the box. And finally, the new Organelle can be powered using four AA batteries. Let's take a quick look at navigating the menus and loading up patches. At the top of the menu system are three items, one dealing with storage, letting you save or load patches or reload the system. If you've installed uh, patches remotely, then you have settings, which lets you configure MIDI, Wi-Fi, and some additional settings. And then extra lets you install additional system components like start VNC, which lets you program patches over Wi-Fi. Underneath the main system menus, are the patch folders. You can create your own. Organelle comes with a lot of effects built in, hybrid patches and samplers, quite a few of these as you can see, a lot of synths, a few utilities, and you can create your own folders and install patches you download from patchstorage.com. Once you've loaded a patch, you'll have at the very least a page with four parameters that you can change. This one lets you transpose. This is called analog style. Control the oscillator ratio. Filter resonance and cutoff.
These buttons typically behave as octaves, the white keys and black keys. The auxiliary button gives you access to additional functions and what it does is typically written on the bottom. Typically this will start and stop recording. It can also function as a shift button. In cases where there's an additional menu, the five items on the left typically are controlled with the five black keys here on the left. The five items in the right column, if there are any, are controlled by the five black keys on the right. So for example, sequencer three, which is a sequencer that's built into a lot of patches, lets you store up to 14 different sequences. You select the sequence that you want to record. Let's say I want to record into sequence slot one, and then you hit shift and record to arm recording. You play in a pattern. It starts looping when you hit the auxiliary button. You can overdub, undo additions, and just stop the sequence if you like. Now, this is just one of the many sequencers that Organelle has. Different patches can use different sequencers. And later on, I'll show you how ORAC lets you take sequencers that don't exist in a particular patch and use it on the sound in that patch. Now, some patches may have more than one page. This one doesn't, and turning the selector knob will get you back to the main menu, but let's say pick this one. This has four sub-menu items, so you click one to enter. Now these four encoders control these parameters, and if you want to access different pages, just turn the knob. This is page two. Now these encoders control these parameters, page three and page four. I don't think I've seen patches get more complex than this, so overall, it's pretty simple and easy to control. Now, while Organelle does come with a lot of built-in patches, like I showed you before, you can install quite a few from patch storage, like I did into this folder. All these guys. It's really easy to install patches. You just go into the settings, into the Wi-Fi setup. You connect to your local Wi-Fi network. This is mine in this case. And then start the web server. From there, you just need to figure out your IP, right? This is my IP here. Then you type that into your browser and you have access to the entire file system to upload and install new patches. Connecting to Wi-Fi also enables Ableton Link. So if you have Ableton Live on the same network or any other device that supports it, like an iPhone or iPad, everything will sync up super smoothly. You change tempo here or on any one of the other devices and it will change across everything connected to that network on Link. While we're on the topic of connecting remotely while editing pure data patches is outside the scope of this video, I'll link to a good tutorial in the description. I'll just say that you can edit patches either by hooking up a keyboard, mouse, and screen to the organelle, or by controlling it remotely using a VNC viewer. Okay, so let's talk about ORAC. As I mentioned before, there are dozens of fantastic patches for the organelle in different categories, whether it's an effect, like an excellent tape delay emulation, or part of mutable instruments clouds, a lo-fi piano, a synth, or an interesting sequencer. The big first world problem that this abundance leads to is what if you want to use a certain sequencer with a specific synth using a certain effect, and oh, by the way, you want to run multiple chains of these components in parallel. Well, because all these patches are written in open source pure data in C, you could potentially create these mega patches yourself, but that requires skills that I don't have, and I guess most people who buy an organelle don't either. And that's the problem ORAC was built to solve. ORAC is an open source mega patch platform written by Mark Harris, who you might see on forums as the Techno Bear, designed to let you chain multiple patches plus quite a bit more. Mark recently introduced ORAC 2.0 with substantial improvements and a simplified workflow and made excellent videos about it, which I'll link to below. I'll just look at the basics. ORAC is loaded up initially, just like you'd load up any other preset. So I've got it here in my folder. And yeah, it appears just like any other preset. And then placing patches in a routing slot is very easy. You press the selector encoder and tap the button that represents the slot that you want to change or control. Now, this may look a bit overwhelming, but after a couple of times, it becomes second nature. In the default routing, the chains have three, four, and then three slots, which aligns nicely with the groups of white keys on the keyboard, starting with C, F, and C. So this is A1, A2, A3, B1, and so on. If I wanted to place a patch into slot C1, I would just press the encoder and then choose C1. It's empty right now. Press the encoder to select modules. And then I could, for example, choose
Let's go with analog style again. Now, I could now play this patch using the internal keyboard or using an external MIDI keyboard pointed to channel 3, which is the default for this track or route of patches. If I wanted to use one of the built-in sequencers, I'd need to put a sequencer in slot C1 and then put analog style in slot C2. So let's do that. Select slot C1, right? And then go to rather my synths, right? This is a list of all my synths. Go up a folder into sequencers and pick, let's say, punchy. So now I have a sequencer, but it's not going to make any sounds. I need to go to slot C2, then choose my synth, in which case I'll go to analog style again. Right, so that's now in slot C2. Go back to C1, then arm it, record a simple sequence. And then when I'm done, I could either put it in regular play mode, which won't latch or latch it, right? Then mess around with the parameters. Let's say I like this speed, go to C2, maybe mess around with the filter, resonance. Okay, so that's nice, but what if I wanted to add an effect on top of the synth? That's what I could do in slot C3. I'll hop on to the effects folder. And there are quite a few to pick from here. Let's just say, start with a simple reverb. And I can mess around with its parameters. Remember, we're on chain C. There are two additional chains, A and B, that can have completely different sequencers, samplers, or synths. Let's swap the reverb for a delay. Yep, and that's why Auric is so powerful. Without any programming, you can chain different sequencers, synths, effects, other components, any way you want. All the patches in each slot can be controlled with an external MIDI controller, and Auric also has three modulation slots, say, if you want to apply an LFO to certain parameter. Other features that I won't go into in depth because Mark does it really well in his videos is overall gain control on a per module basis, as well as bypass if you wanted, presets to save chains, joint sample management and kits, MPE support, remote control over OSC, a scope, and coming soon even CV modulation options if you have a DC coupled audio interface and want to control modular gear. Now, two catches to ORAC. One is that modules need to be adapted to ORAC to be included in chains. Now, Mark has already gone ahead and done that to dozens of modules, but many nice modules, especially new ones, may not be included until Mark, you, or someone else in the community adapts them to ORAC. Now, there is what Mark calls an Easter egg option where you can plop in one full non-adapted module into one slot. I'll link to a video on how to do that. It's not trivial and it's not guaranteed to work with all modules, but it just might work with the module you want to use. The second thing you need to know is that there are some quirks and potentially bugs. Now, all that said, ORAC is amazing and kudos to Mark for building this. If you ever own an electronic music instrument and see the techno bear active in its forums, you know good stuff is about to happen. Okay, so let's sum it up and talk about pros and cons. On the cons side, Organelle is more suited for live performance and jamming than for people who are looking for something that will let them create a whole arrangement or are looking for a song mode. Now, maybe in the future someone will come along and make a master arranger for ORAC, but until then, if you're looking to create full songs that will just play on their own, you'll need either a DAW or an external sequencer controlling Organelle to pull that off. Also, on the cons side, while this keyboard is very cute, it's not velocity sensitive and it's not suited for people who expect and are used to using regular keyboards. Also, while many patches have pitch control functions, Organelle doesn't have direct octave transpose buttons, so it's not that easy to play beyond the two octave range here. 
That said, Organelle has two USB host outputs, which means it can both power and receive MIDI information on a single USB cable, so you can connect an external MIDI controller and use that to play more than two octaves or with velocity sensitivity as you wish. Finally, on the cons side, and again, ORAC is amazing, but it would be really nice if at some point chains were just an inherent part of the operating system so that patches wouldn't need to be adopted to ORAC, but rather they would just work connected one to the other. On the pro side, the fun character of the company, Critter and Guitari, is all over the patches that both they and the community create for Organelle, and I mean that in the best way possible. So many other sequencers and synths come with various iterations of a boring 16-step grid these days that it's refreshing to see the abundance of quirky and original sequencing ideas in Organelle, as well as quite a few original approaches to sampling and looping. The focus here is on fun and being in the moment of creation, and if you want examples, I mean, there are so many options here. Uh, you know, things like Transienti Segmenti, and um, yeah, all the different loopers and sequencers in here. Let's look at some of the third-party ones I downloaded. These are, Pico Studio is an awesome four-track looper. I highly recommend you try these out if you have a chance. Speaking of interesting and fun ideas, there are quite a few of those in my ever-expanding book available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section below and hit like if this was useful. Don't forget to ring the notification bell if you want to see more content like this after you subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. Testing. Testing. Testing.